Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. October 26, 1984, Seattle, Washington, MSR or Mountain Safety Research released the newest state-of-the-art stove, the Whisper Light. They said that it was poised to become the new standard in liquid-fueled stoves for the backcountry and they were right. 27 years later, the stove is still being produced, essentially unchanged. Now, since I'm a stove guy and I like collecting stoves and I've started to dabble into some white gas stoves lately, I went ahead and picked one up on eBay. I had to do a little bit of work to it, but I got it up and running very nicely. Let's take a look at the MSR Whisper Light and see what all the fuss is about. Thanks for watching, guys. So what made the Whisper Light such a big deal back in 1984? Well, I found a couple of original uh, media pieces. Take a look at these. It had a special ported burner that created a quieter flame, stainless steel and brass construction. It had the MSR Shaker Jack technology, which was brand new at that time, and that allows the stove to clean itself with just a simple shake. The cost back then, by the way, was $40. That's a pretty low price. This is my Whisper Light stove from MSR. Dimensions are 6.5 by 5 by 4. Weight of the current stove is 10.9 ounces. Let's see how much mine weighs. Now, what I mean by current stove is that you can still buy this stove. This is an older stove. I bought it off of eBay. Let's see what we get. 9.3 ounces. I'm going to make sure that this is all on here. Yeah, 9.3 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter than the current stove is quoted at. You can see how it folds up. You just get these legs, put them into place. They have little indents that allow you to know where to pop them in, just like that. It also comes with a fuel pump, just like this, all right? And you do need a fuel bottle, which is this one. With these three things, you have a very nice stove. Boil time, they state, is four minutes for one liter of water. It says it'll burn 136 minutes on 20 ounces of fuel. So this is a 20 ounce fuel bottle and it is completely full. So theoretically over two hours of on high uh, boiling with this stove, with this amount of fuel. It's very reliable, feel proven. This thing's been around for over 30 years. It's got the shaker jet technology so you can shake it. And what that's doing is the same thing as for example, this Vea 123R. Uh, the original Svea 123 did not have a, a needle to clear the jet. And the 123R added that when you crank all the way to the left. Now this one, all you have to do is shake and that needle will open up the nozzle and try to get any impurities out of there so it keeps working just fine. It's also very easily maintained and it's designed to be easily maintained in the field. For about $30, you can buy a full maintenance kit that has basically any spare part that you need to make any of this work, any of the parts of the pump that go bad, the fuel filter, any of this stuff, you get a spare for about $30. I have one, I've used a couple of pieces, and it's absolutely awesome to be able to have something like that to keep this thing going. In fact, when I bought it, it was old. I mean, I don't know how old this is. I imagine it's probably 15, 20 years old. It had some issues and I had to replace several parts and pieces, but it got running just fine. A new stove includes the stove, a fuel pump, a windscreen, and a heat reflector. I got one, but it was garbage, so I threw it away. It also has a very small parts kit and a stuff sack. This is what I got in the mail, um, minus the fuel bottle. So I got just this and I bought myself a fuel bottle afterwards. You can find these very inexpensively on eBay. I think I spent about $25 for it. Then I spent $30 on this fuel bottle. So about $50, $60, you can get yourself one of these and be up and running very quickly. Let's take it outside. I, I, I am brave with a lot of stoves on starting them indoors, but this particular white gas stove, I'm not going to I just don't like the procedure as far as putting it, it's just not safe to do indoors. So let's go outside. Thank you. 
right, so we've taken a good look at this classic stove. Now we'll talk about what we think, and we'll start by discussing what is this stove designed to do. It's designed to work in any kind of conditions, to be very reliable, and to be very easy to fix. It's very easy to maintain out in the field. It's designed to function flawlessly in almost any conditions. It's very simple to use, and these are all the reasons that not only myself, but many, many other people, thousands and tens of thousands of people have loved this stove over the years. But do I see myself using this stove a lot? Personally, me? No, I don't see myself using it very much. Bottom line is, is that I'm not a mountaineer. I live at sea level or less in some cases. We rock around below sea level at times. So I'm not gonna face these crazy weather conditions that make a liquid fuel stove so attractive. On a day-to-day -day basis, I am going to choose the simplicity and the safety of a gas canister stove. Using a little butane stove or isobutane stove or even a propane canister to me is a lot safer and makes a lot more sense than white gas. Liquid fuel is easy to spill. It's just easier to have an accident with. And again, if there's no reason that I would choose it over something simpler, I would not. Now, if I went up to altitude or I was gonna be in super cold conditions, I would consider bringing it or maybe my Svea 123R, things that function very well and very consistently. But as far as I go and in the situations that I use stoves mainly, this is more just a collector stove for me. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how to unhook the stove without spilling gas everywhere. I mean, am I missing something when I unhook it, you know, the, the line from the pump, there's always fuel left in there and I try to burn it off. It just never seems to work. Fuel still kind of gets everywhere. That's probably the most frustrating part of this stove for me. Overall, I really like the stove and, and honestly, there is something pretty nostalgic and awesome about hearing a liquid fuel stove kind of just humming away early morning, need some coffee. It just sounds like being outdoors. When I was a kid, my, my dad had Coleman white gas stoves and uh, I remember going camping with him and, and hearing it going at the beginning of the day and it really did make a difference. So he went up hunting a lot to Wyoming and Montana, so he used it in those conditions that were needed. But since he had them, he used them with us as well when we went camping and it is a nice memory. If liquid fuel is what you're wanting, then this is a really good option. I mean, like if you compare it to a competitor of the day like the Svea 123, this is way lighter, way more compact, and way easier to, uh, to handle. It has a separate fuel bottle, which is nice, so you can kind of keep both separate. Since the Svea is all in one, it's just one big heavy lump of brass. Uh, this is a lot better if you're looking for something white gas related. I think it's probably better than the others out there. That said, you do have to carry liquid fuel. It gets very heavy. I see this more as a base camp type stove, or like I said, if you're really going mountaineering and you're going up to altitude and it's super snowy and below zero, then a white gas stove like this is very functional. That's what they say, because like I said, I ain't never been up there and I'm not sure if I wanna be below zero on top of a mountain. MSR has quite a few other liquid fuel stoves. This is the basic Whisper Light. They have lots of different varieties. They've been somewhat hard to get uh, during the pandemic, but you can find them if you go to an REI store, I was there a couple weeks ago and they basically didn't have any of the liquid fuel stoves in stock. So it can be a little bit difficult, but if you're looking for different types of stoves with different uh, characteristics, just check out the MSR website. They've got plenty to choose from. If you wanna use different fuels like unleaded fuel or kerosene, they have stoves that can do that as well. Now I do a lot of stove videos, so it was about time that I picked up one of these classic stoves. Like I said, I knew that I wouldn't use it a whole lot day to day, but as a collector, it's hard to avoid these vintage liquid fuel stoves, especially from MSR. I'm constantly looking for other models that are reasonably priced. I don't wanna just throw a couple hundred dollars at something. If you're careful, you can pick things up on eBay still, not as easily as you used to be able to. It's more of a shop now, it seems like, but you can buy private stuff on eBay sometimes. So I'll hopefully do more reviews of some vintage MSR gear down the road. Not sure if you guys are aware, but I have an entire playlist on stoves. Make sure you check that down below. And listen, do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. It really helps spread things across YouTube and helps my channel tremendously. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, hit the notification bell and you will be the first to know. I really enjoy all these stoves. Getting to some of these older stoves is very cool. Um, I'm looking forward to a couple of more videos that I have coming up on some liquid fuel stoves, so check those out. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.